loving me I loving you Mothers and fathers Husbands and wives Sisters and brothers Friends for life Won't live in the past All I wanna do now Is making it last it's time for another conversation, and this is a conversation that has taken some time in coming, and you will understand why. Because when you've been, been socialized in the Caribbean society, and specifically Jamaica, where we're classified sometimes as being very homophobic, what we're about to talk about this time around is a very touchy and sensitive topic for a lot of individuals. But I'm going to be talking with a friend of mine. So this is quite comfortable for me. We're going to be talking about how him deciding to live his truth, actually living as a homosexual in Jamaica, how that has impacted his relationship. So we're going to be talking with Nikoi Wilson. He's a policy and advocacy officer for Equality for All Foundation in Jamaica. He's a former Gleaner reporter, a former CVM reporter. Welcome, Nikoi. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. All right. How has the decision to live your truth impacted your relationships? And I remember when I, I mentioned this to you, you said that it hasn't negatively impacted your relationship. So we will get to that piece. But before we, 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 we get to what we really want to talk about, give me an idea of your journey and why is it that you decided that you would, I guess the common term is come out. All right, so for me, um, I've always, as, as far as I could remember, I've always had feelings for, for guys, for boys. For when I was a young, when I was younger, I had feelings for mm -hmm. boys. Growing up, you know, had feelings for um, classmates, schoolmates, etc. Um, so it was always there. Um, mm -hmm. And because of how we were socialized, you know, so for example, in fourth form, I had a girlfriend, um, which is an interesting story too. And I, I'm not even going to touch that part. <laughs> But um, okay. I, I um, you know, growing up, um, especially because of how my, my family life was, mm -hmm. um, I wasn't necessarily, so I, I wasn't necessarily suppressed, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, so I used to walk around the house with my blanket on my head, like a little girl. Um, but it wasn't like, oh, we're not, oh, going to beat you. Gonna do it. So I didn't have that sort. I didn't grow up in that sort of environment where I had to necessarily fear, mm -hmm. um, you know, being who I was. Mm -hmm. um, however, my decision to uh, come out, so to speak, mm -hmm. was really one which I had to think about. And for anybody who is out there who is contemplating coming out and what coming out probably means in Jamaica, it's mm -hmm. something that you really have to think about. I, I examined my um, relationships at the time, you know, my situation, whether or not this was a good decision. And ultimately, I thought it was. So for many of us in Jamaica, we oftentimes have to deal with, for one, the religious community. So many of us, we grew up in the church. Uh, so mm -hmm. already, even move, if, if, you're, or if you've been in the church for years and years and you're, you be, you're, you've been in a particular church, uh, you you feel that indirect pressure to conform to what you were taught. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't necessarily have that because when I went to NCU, I was, in a, I was a part of another church, got baptized at NCU, and then mm -hmm. I moved my membership from NCU church to Mandeville church, and then mm -hmm. I, just, I just slowly kind of took away myself. Okay. <laughs> get what I'm so I didn't have that pressure. Mm -hmm. As it relates to family, so many people who were, people who are close to me, um, and people who have shared this story with me know that I'm adopted. And my adopted family, um, they're, 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 there are some members that I'm close to, but most of them I'm not close to. As it relates to my biological family, my sister is who I would be really close to. But in terms of our closeness, it doesn't get to that level where I, I feel the need to talk to her about my love life. Okay. So it has never been a case where I had to like come out, with, come out to her. Um, and I don't even know. I don't know if she knows. I don't, but it's not something that I'm concerned about. But it was really because of all of these factors why I was able to take the decision to come out. And then even in my, when I, cause I did, I, my, my first coming out would have been um, August, 2019. That was during um, our pride celebrations. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
Mm-hmm. Um, I had been at Guinea for a while, for, for, for long enough. And also, um, I knew what the environment at Gleaner was. I knew that, for example, if LGBT issues came up, the editor mm-hmm. was not afraid to tackle it. Um, in fact, the paper itself has in the past expressed, um, you know, pro-LGBT views. Um, mm-hmm. So that wasn't necessarily a fear. And then when I finally made my post on social media in 2019, um, the feedback that I got was very good. Even on Facebook, there were people there. There were people who comment. There was that one person who commented negatively. And then somebody who I knew, uh, one of my neighbors um, who I'd grown up with, basically, she was there defending me. So the response was really good. I know you've been enjoying the conversation, but we're going to take a little break and get a word from our sponsor. Are you struggling to become an effective communicator? Let Noreen Daly, the communication specialist, get you there. Services include communications consultancy, one-on-one coaching, public speaking and debate training, leadership and team building sessions, plus much more. Visit NoreenDaily.com for more info. Noreen Daly, redefining the way you communicate. Mm-hmm. Um, already you know that or in terms of our population, the statistics, you know, when you look at it, I think the last time it was probably less than five or you something to that effect having a tertiary level education, as in a bachelor's degree. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, look at that and you break that down to even a group like the LGBT community, you can imagine that, especially because of the position that they're in. And many people will say, oh, they choose to be this way. They choose to live this way. It's, mm-hmm. a, cho- it's a choice to live openly, yes? But just mm-hmm. imagine not being able to live openly. Just imagine... Um, you know, knowing that you have these feelings and not being able to express them. And it always comes back to this for me. It's, 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 it's a human, the human, the human aspect that you should, well, the human, the humanity. We like the humanity to recognize that LGBT people like myself are humans. We are humans and we also have aspirations and goals. We also want to get married. We also want to have children. We have all of these things. It may not be in the way that we were traditionally taught, but we all have these, most of us have these aspirations. Um, but gonna... yeah, that privilege, that privilege really, um, it's something that, and I suppose you can even extend that to the general population, having a degree, what that can do for you, the door okay. that can open up. Um, okay. And I mean, even if, as an LGBT individual, having a degree, um, especially if you openly identify as um, LGBT, may not work for you, but those of us who it works for, we really benefit from a level of privilege that others aren't. So my being able to live openly, my being able to walk on the road, my being able to wear, and it's interesting, my being able to wear right tights, my tights to go and run, is mm-hmm. a privilege that I can, can, can enjoy where other people can't. There are people in rural Jamaica who literally, they're afraid of even saying the word, they're afraid of saying the word LGBT, they're afraid mm-hmm. to even send mm-hmm. certain messages you know, it's that sort of situation that they are in. So, yeah, the privilege has to be acknowledged. We're, we're going to backtrack a little bit, though, because you said something earlier. And because I, in, 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 in my other life, which is, which is as an educator, I, I encounter young people sometimes who they're struggling with their sexuality and not sure, you know, in which direction that they want to go. At what point you said to yourself, you know, this is who I am. You probably at the point didn't say I am going to openly say this to everybody. But at what point did you say to yourself, you know, this is just who I am. I will accept me like this, regardless of, 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 of how I've been socialized and how I've been taught. Because I do know of individuals who continue to struggle. With, with that. So at what point did you say to yourself, self, this is me. I'm going to live with me. And eventually at some point, I will allow those around me to know that, that this is who I am. Um, well, I, it, it's interesting you ask that question because just like coming out, it's almost as if you're always doing it. There's always someone who doesn't know who you may have to, or you may feel that you need to let know. There's, it's always a process. You go, you're going out mm-hmm. and you go out, you know, um, people seeing you, you dress a particular way, it's you, mm-hmm. like you're outing yourself again. So you always have to deal with that. And as it okay. relates to coming to terms with oneself and being able to live one's truth, um, 
it was a it was a long process for me because um in before I got to fifth form, the summer of 20, 2010, mm-hmm. before entering um fifth form, I had actually spoke to one of my friends, Robin, um, who would have been one of my one of one of the first straight friends that I would have well had who would have known about my sexuality. Before that summer was done, everybody knew. Every all of my mm-hmm. friends knew. Because I was I had a group of friends. Um one, two, about five females, one male. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I told them, and the reaction, I mean, one of them, it's a lot, God, why? And then there was another one who I told later on who was, you know, had that similar reaction. But in the end, it was all love. And okay. that is what, that, that's really, that, that was helpful. And a lot of people don't have that. Um, so even that's a, that's a privilege too, the support. It is definitely a privilege. A lot of people don't have that. So initially it was high school. That was when I would say, okay, yes, I yeah, this is who I am. Whatever. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. We speak about a lot about socialization. Um, and most of us would have grown up in the church. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's very hard to disabuse yourself of that those beliefs. Mm-hmm. Because, all right, so you 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 are you are raised in a way um, to say, okay, if you don't live your life this way, then you're going to go to hell. You know, mm-hmm. so you're, you're always so the, that battle for many people that battle will persist. There are people who would have who would have known they're gay and they would have been gay, they would have been um, living um, in that way for years, but still that's still a question. You know, oh God, you know, is this right? Oh, that's all. That's always going to be a question for many people. Um, for me, when I got to NCU, right, mm-hmm. uh, and I and I got baptized and so on, it was like. Does this really make sense? Because for one, so in my other church, mm-hmm. whatever they were teaching, I wasn't convicted of it. And then even getting baptized at NCU, and I don't want to get into the practice that the, pra- that the practice that would have led me to get baptized, which is where you would get the person who would be guiding you. Mm-hmm. But because mm-hmm. the, the, the mindset is, oh, we need, to, we need to get this person baptized. It's just about caring for the person and meeting okay. the person where they are. And mm-hmm. more about bringing the person where you think they should be at this point to get baptized. And that is what happened. So even when I was, even when, when we get baptized, I still had doubts. I still questioned whether or not religion, Christianity was for me or Seventh-day Adventism was for me. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. in the end, I had to make a choice. And I was like, no, this does not make sense. I, I, I cannot, I cannot. And this is, the, and this is, this is it. So even as, a, as an LGBT person, and even with the understanding that, um, a lot of times how people in general, not even only Christians, operate is, is not on the basis of respect. And mm-hmm. you know, that's where we should go. I can mm-hmm. I can I can I can I can understand why Christians act the way they do. Many of them act the way they do and do what they do because they're convicted of the belief that they have. So mm-hmm. just as how I'm convicted that, you know, this is how I am, and I'm not even going to get into the argument of whether I was born this way, but right. I just saw it there. This that's this this is who I am. Okay. I have fought it. And I think that's one of the assumptions people make that we don't fight it. We fought it. We fought it. We have gone through it. Many, many, many LGBT people are at home. They're fighting it and they're, they're crying in their beds. They're literally crying in their beds. And you can only imagine what can, that can do for one's mental health. I know you've been enjoying the conversation, but we're going to take a little break and get a word from our sponsor. So... The whole idea of a branding strategy sounded so exotic and so fancy to me. But after having several conversations with Neon, I now have a clearer understanding. I am sure of what my identity is, what it is that I want people to see Noreen Daly as. Thanks, Neon. Thanks, Splint. Visit them at wearesplint.com. I, you 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 spoke about something I wanted to spend a little time on, which is the whole idea of your spiritual relationship then and your spiritual connection. So for 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 some people, and I know that there are some people are going to say, okay, why 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 has Miss Daly accommodated this conversation? Mm-hmm. Maybe they might be sending me to hell, but that's one other conversation. Another time. <laughs> but how how have you made that piece in your mind to say? This God that a lot of us sometimes are socialized to think will send us straight to hell if we have these these tendencies. How have you made that peace in your mind and have and how have you maintained that spiritual connection with God? Well, for one, 
I believe that one's experience of God is very individualistic. Okay. And that many times the way how God reveals him or herself or itself to us mm-hmm. is, uh, is, is, is really experiential. It, it's not something that you read in a book. My okay. belief in God isn't grounded in the Bible. My belief is grounded in the fact that when I was three months old, my, my adopted mom, my, my biological mother died. I was quickly adopted into a family, the family that she worked for. That family mm. would have allowed me basically to have the opportunities that I, that I had to get where I am now. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's very hard for me to not see God in the picture. Okay. Um, and, it's, and, 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 and that's it. So it should be, it really, I mean, I, I, think, I think we try too hard to invalidate other people's experiences mm. instead of accepting that, okay, that their experience of God is different. You know, and I think also we may also we, we may seek validation in being a part of a religion mm-hmm. um, when maybe your experience of God and how you and well, how you communicate with God and whatever is really is just what you need. But because you don't you think it's not a big religion or, you're, you know, you're not a large part of a larger group, you probably mm-hmm. feel isolated and decide that you need to join a larger group. Because I find that a lot of young people, that, that's one of the things, you know, mm-hmm. they want to be a part of, of something. And a lot of times it's church for them. True, true, true. And, Norm- and you know, I'm going Go to ahead. have to drop, I have to, I, have to, I have to put this in, this is like a side note, but let me just say, there are a lot of LGBT people in the SDA community. A lot. Too many. <laughs> too yeah. many in the church probably would say. And they, <laughs> they want to deny it, but they are. And they're true. practicing They're practicing gay people. So this conversation is not over. And it's a conversation that we need to have about people living their truth, whatever that truth might be. Join me again next time when we continue this conversation with Nikoi Wilson. This was Noreen Daily with Make It Last podcast, where it's all about helping us to have better relationships, not just with ourselves, but with other people. Making it last is all I care to do. You loving me. I loving you, mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life won't live in the past. All I wanna do now is making it last.